Okay, so I assigned you um, to write about a place and we have hopefully done that bubble diagram where you break your place down into three areas like I did my finca. Um, I already had one student who told me that she had trouble seeing the board and I sent her a, a, a snapshot of it um, and I think that it helped her a lot so if you have trouble with that and you want a snapshot too please let me know and I can send one to you. Um, right now we're getting ready to do revisions and final draft of that essay and um, and I wrote one myself for for my finca remember uh, based on my bubble diagram and let's see how that how that comes across I wrote it with the idea of having an audience of people in the United States many times I'm called upon to talk about what our life is like here um, when we go visit churches and different people in the States. And so I'm thinking about that. And I'm also thinking about talking to people your age. So let's see. Cultivate Honduras. By the way, I'm sorry. Cultivate Honduras is the name of our ministry. Okay. Cultivate Honduras and our home is located in uh, on a farm in an area called Aldea Cerro Grande, not far from the tourist town of Valle de Angeles. The name of the farm, Via Irma, is on a wooden sign over the large black entry gate. Near the gate are some trees with flowers and other plants under them, and not far from there is an orange building that I call the gatehouse. A young man named Daniel lives there right now. He is my husband's main helper, and he is in charge of watching the gate. Um, a stone paved driveway leads past a small worker's house where no one lives right now and our bodega to another gate. This second gate has lanterns on either side. Entering through this gate into our yard, you will probably meet our three dogs, Osa, Wookie, and Gigi. Osa is a Labradane and the other two are her puppies and they are very friendly, all three of them. We have uh, a nice sized lawn with a lot of flowers and plants shaded by a huge mango tree in the front and a very tall pine tree in the back. To your right, as you enter our yard, you'll see our pool. It's old, so we have trouble keeping it full, but I love it. Our house is red and, our three and has three bedrooms and a big porch in the back. In the backyard, we have a traditional Honduran oven or orno where we sometimes roast meat or bake bread. Behind the back wall is the orchard with citrus trees, banana plants, and coffee. And to the right, there are fields where we plant beans, pineapples, and other things. We have lived here for six years and we love it. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of the kind of thing I'm looking for. I could say a lot more things about our finca where we live, but I decided to stop there because that's about the length I'm wanting you to write and because I don't want you to lose interest. <laughs> so let's evaluate the way I would like you to evaluate your own writing as you go about making revisions and editing it. Um, remember the six traits, ideas, organization, voice, word choice, sentence fluency, and conventions. And SOAP, S-O-A-P. Subject, occasion, audience, and purpose. So for your ideas, did you include a lot of details? Because details are the things that make things interesting. You notice I talked about Daniel and I talked about our dogs and our Orno. And those are the things that make it interesting. Um, did you follow directions? Okay, I. I named my place and I divided it into three areas, front, middle, and back. Although I didn't say front, middle, and back in my essay. So that's something to think about. Um, it's about the right length. Um, and then I go on to organization. Did I put things in a logical order? So when you're describing a place, usually we organize things spatially, which means that we group things according to where they are physically uh, within the space. And so um, I did that. I went from the front 
to the middle, to the back, and I organize things that way. And then voice, it says, remember your subject, occasion, audience, and purpose. And so I was talking to people in the United States, so I had to, for example, explain what an orno is. Um, and my occasion would be visiting maybe a youth group at a church or something like that in the States. My purpose would be to inform them about some, a little piece of what my life is like here. And the word choice, is it correct English? Well, I'm a native English speaker, so mine is probably going to be easier than yours. Um, if you're not sure about something, you can always ask me in the comments section below. Or you can, um, you can send me a WhatsApp. Most of you have my number, I believe. And then specific words. Uh, for example, let me see if I've changed anything along those lines when I was looking through it. Um, I forgot to put that we lived on a farm, and I, th I thought that was important, so I added that between my lines. Um, and I decided to make it my, not just say our gate, but say our large black gate, so that people could picture what our gate was like. So I added those words in. Adding specific words in, or changing words that are general to something more specific, like instead of big, you could say tall or fat, because both of those things could be big. Um, let's see. Sentence fluency. Um, I didn't have any run-ons, and I had some shorter sentences and some longer sentences. Um, in this particular case, I didn't, the, the length didn't vary a whole lot, but it did vary a little bit. And when it says type, I'm talking about compound sentences and, and complex sentences. You want to throw some of those in and not just have every sentence be simple. So, for example, um, compound complex. <laughs> Let me look here. Um, let's try. Okay, near the gate are some trees with flowers and other plants under them, one sentence. And not far from there is an orange building that I call the gatehouse. And that's another part. So the first, and the first part is simple, and the second part is complex. So I have like simple compound complex sentences in there. Um, just try not to make all short sentences or you'll sound like a robot and don't make it all long sentences or you'll sound like a textbook and we don't want either one of those. Conventions um, include grammar, spelling, punctuation, capitalization. Those are the things that normally uh, when I tell kids to check over their papers or revise and edit their papers, they look at this stuff. But notice that it's only a small part of what I'm checking for. Um, and underline and italicize words that are not in English. In my case, I would have to underline the word orno, which I think I did. <laughs> and, um, or if I'm typing, I would italicize the word orno because it's not in English. And that's how we indicate that something is a foreign word. Once you have made some changes according to all of these things, your rough draft should look rough. It shouldn't be neat. It should have things scratched out. It might have arrows drawn from one thing to another because maybe something was not in the correct logical or spatial order. Um, and you could have things written between the lines that you decided to add. Uh, remember that this is supposed to be 23 to 25 sentences. That's quite a lot. Um, but you, but it, I want you to, I wanted to encourage you to include a lot of detail in your description. So that's why I had that many words, I mean, that many sentences. Anyway, so once you have all of that revision done, then it's time to take a picture of that rough, rough draft. And you can turn that in. Please do not turn it in under the rough draft section. Turn it in under the revisions section. There will be another assignment called revisions and final draft. And on there you need a picture of your revised rough draft and then also a picture or file of your 
final draft, which should be neat, does not have to skip lines or be double spaced, and can be either a written out final draft or a file, like a Word document. Uh, submit those things on Google Classroom and you should be fine. Happy writing!